grab some stitching, grab something to drink. This is going to be a short one. Hello there everybody, how's it going? It's Jessie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff here on Floss Tube, and I am here with my next update. Today is Wednesday, February the 1st, 2017. We made it. We're on time. And, as I mentioned in the introduction, I don't expect this one to be a very long one. Certainly not floss tube movie worthy. Um, part of that is concentrated effort. I'm not trying to, to make such long videos anymore. Number one, that took a lot out of me and it took forever to upload over 24 hours. That was not fun. Um, but then also, because it's only been a few days since I last filmed, um, I haven't worked on a ton, and so I don't have a whole lot to show. A few things, but not nothing exorbitant, nothing crazy. So, but we do have a little bit to talk about, um, and a couple things to address before I start talking about actual stitching things. The first is that throughout this video you may notice that I have a nail that looks a little funny. I painted it that way, so no, no panicking, nothing's, nothing's broken or anything. Um, I thought that I might try out a new nail polish and I only had time to paint one nail before I started filming, before I was like, oh, I probably should film today. Um, so yeah, um, and if anybody's wondering, that is Essie Wicked. I know some people get curious about nail polishes, so it's like a deep, deep, dark plum color. One of my favorites. Um, so yeah, there's that. There's also my t-shirt, and I'm sure that questions will arise. Jess, what's your shirt say? So my shirt is a little bit subversive. And it says, I don't often hate, but when I do, I prefer to hate the Virginia Cavaliers. So um, it's obviously a play on words. Um, today, Virginia Tech is playing the uh, University of Virginia Cavaliers in men's basketball. They are our big in-state rival. Um, UVA is pretty talented as far as basketball is concerned. And the Hokies are... We've had some ups and downs this season, shall we say. Um, we've had some really great wins. Uh, we beat Duke. And then we lost to UNC. Um... But we've been doing really, really well this season, and so it's kind of a nail-biter of a game. So that is happening tonight, so I'm wearing my hokey stuff. I've got my hokey cup. Cheering on the Hokies today. So that's what the shirt's about. I knew that the question was probably going to come up because you can kind of see the words. So yeah, there's that. Um, so what do we have to talk about? I have my projects from last week, or these last few days, I guess, not a whole week. Um, and yes, that is multiple, and I'll explain. I also have what I'm currently working on. I have plans, but since I talked to you more in depth about plans last video, um, that will probably be, be very brief. I have a little bit of stash acquisitions, and I have quite a little bit to talk about in books. Um, but none of these segments are going to be super extenuous. But I didn't have any questions on my last video, at least none that I could find. Um, so um, nothing to go over there. If you have questions, leave them down below. I'll address them next time. So with that being said, let's talk about the projects that I've worked on in the last week. Okay, so the first of my webs, the first of my works in progress is Persephone by Mirabilia. And you'll be seeing a preview now of what this will look like, or excuse me, what it looked like last time. And um, here is what it will look like finished. And here is what it looks like now. Now I'm only going to show you the top half because that's the only progress that was made. And I did not I didn't finish the stitching on this. So I'll explain once I show you. Okay. So I made some pretty great strides in that background there. Um, 
and so I was basically working up in this region. Um, the wallpaper background there is done in Karen Water Lilies, um, and it's a combination of Espresso and Black Forest by Karen Water Lilies. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I really love the way that it's looking. It's kind of gothic. It's a little bit dark. Really, really loving that. But it's not done. And the reason it's not done is that I got a little bit burnout. Now, it may be self-induced burnout because I set this lofty goal and very quickly realized the, not impossibility, but unlikely possibility of reaching that goal. Not only that, but if by some, by some chance I did reach that goal, if by some chance I did reach the end of this wallpaper background by yesterday, I knew that I was going to start beating immediately. And I know that beating is going to take me a lot longer than I'd like. So like, for instance, I think that it could, I could probably get it done in a week. Realistically speaking, there's over 3,000 beads in this project. So I think over 3,000. I'm going to do an official count when I start beading. Um, so it's going to take me several weeks. I worked on this pretty obsessively for the first few days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday is when I filmed. I worked on it on Saturday and then again on Sunday. So I mean, that's like seven days. And that's not a problem. It's not a huge big deal. But I worked on it really hard for a lot of those days. And I, I just wasn't feeling like working that hard anymore on it. So I put it down. Um, and I resigned myself to that being okay. Um, because she will get done. Getting her done this year is, was a big question mark at the beginning of the year. Um, and now it seems very much, very much more achievable. So I do have quite a bit of work still left to do. I still have to complete that wallpaper background. And it includes basically this, this side being repeated over here. And then another section of it there. In this part. So... There's still quite a bit left to do before I get to start the beads. But I just knew that if I kept with her, it was going to throw my whole rotation into mayhem. And while Persephone is one of my big goals for this year, it's not my only goal. And I'm looking over here because one of my saddles is over here. It's loaded up. One of my, one of my other goals is keeping up with the stitch alongs. One of those obviously is not going to happen because I'm already two months behind now. But trying to keep up with the stitch alongs that I've got going. So it just I didn't want to I didn't want to get too far behind because I would feel behind and I would feel pressured to turn this out and I want to enjoy it. A multitude of things. So I just decided to put her down. Um, and I think that after, so Saturday I only got to stitch for a little bit because I was working on uploading that video all day. Um, I was feeling the, that sense of burnout on Saturday, but I thought, I'm just tired. So I picked her back up on Sunday and I was like, nope, that burnout was legit. So I'm going to put her down. So I did. And it's okay. She's going to get done this year. And she's still gorgeous. So, there's that. Um, real quickly, the fabric here is a 32 count Belfast in Tempest by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. Absolutely gorgeous fabric. So, there is that. There's my Persephone, who will get some more love a little bit later. Okay, so then, put her down, what do I work on next? Well, I decided to do another random number draw, just like I had discussed with you guys. 
Okay, everybody. So as promised, I mentioned that when I got bored with Persephone or I felt like moving on, I was going to record a screen capture my selection of the next project. And so that's what we're doing here today. I think I'm a little bit burnt out on Persephone. I've put in some really good work over the last few days and it's time for, it's time for a change, time to do something different. So, um, like before, I have everything here numbered from 1 to 24. I ignore these numbers on the far left, but from 1 to 24. And so we're going to flip over to random number generator, just like last time, through 24. Hit generate. We're going to get number 2. All right, let's see what number 2 is. Number 2 is Cross Stitch Lover by Ursula Michael. So I will pull out my Cross Stitch Lover and work on that for at least 100 stitches, but... Um, this one is going to be a quick one to finish up, so maybe I'll have a finish by the next time I record. So, as you can see, it drew Cross Stitch Lover by Ursula Michael. Now, Katie, this Dash Queen, um, this is why I left that comment to you on Instagram, because I noticed that the day that I drew this, totally random, you started it. And honest to goodness, I had no idea. So I thought that was, that was pretty wild um so yeah like i said cross stitch lover by ursula michael um this was in the just cross stitch magazine january february 2016 edition um and you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like the last time you saw it as well as what it will look like finished um and this i am stitching using um, Weeks Dye Works from my stash, as well as Petite Treasure Braid, where appropriate, um, in place of the DMCs. And I'm stitching it on a 32 count Belfast linen in cream from Zweigart. So, this is where I got to. Oh, look at that. Big change here. Okay, so I'm going to fold up and make it a little bit more manageable. So there we have it. Basically what I did is the dark blue. Um, and so it says, let's see, we've got, um, a, we have a spool here with a thread coming off of it. Uh, this is beads. This is some um, stitches. Uh, it's like an, I can't remember what it's called. Four-sided stitch or square. <laughs> Um, and then we have cross stitch lever, we have even weave, and then scissors. Oh, and counted, right there. So I got the blue done, and that blue is uh, Weeks Dye Works Americana. Um, you can't see any variegation in it. So that's great. But I really like it. So. I'm looking at this and I'm working on it and I'm like, finish this in a day or maybe a little more. Sorry, that one is driving me nuts. I got to take that off. Um, if I work on this pretty hard, I could finish it. So Sunday I got to work on the blue and that cross stitch lever took a little bit more time than I was expecting it to because there are a million and one quarter stitches in that cross stitch lever. Uh, this should be called the quarter stitch lever because yeah, there was a bunch of, of quarter stitches in that. Um, but that's okay. Got them done. And um, so I finished the blue and I was like, all right, about halfway. I think I'm about halfway at this point. There's some frills to show the fabric around the edge of the hoop. I have my scissors to do, my stork scissors. And then there's another section in green that I have to do. So by the time I finished up scissors, I'd had enough of backstitch. That's basically what it boils down to. And since this design is 99% backstitch, I thought, okay, I'm done. So, Monday afternoon, I drew again.
Hello there everybody, how's it going? Uh, so it's about 24 hours since I last did a draw and I'm drawn again. I don't know what's wrong with me, I'm feeling a little bit unsettled with my stitching currently I think. Uh, not for any particular reason that I can nail down, but um, I'm just kind of done with my progress for Cross Stitch Lover. You will have seen that I finished up the blue section, that feels like a good stopping point. And so I'm going to switch it up and draw here for you on camera again. So again, we're going to go through uh, with 1 through 24, and it doesn't matter what it draws. Uh, if it draws cross-stitch lever again, then I'll have to go back to it, but we shall see. So again, we're going to put in 1 through 24, hit generate, and it grabbed number 6. So let's see what number 6 is. Number 6 is Elizabeth by Glendon Place. I um, mean that is that's pretty uh, that's appealing to me. I am looking forward to working on some Elizabeth. So you'll be seeing here very shortly what I get done. Uh, today is Monday, January thirtieth, and so depending on how things go, I'll stick with this through today, probably into tomorrow. Um, so we'll see what happens. As you can see, it drew Elizabeth by Glendon Place. And so you'll be seeing a preview here of what this looked like the last time you saw it. Uh, the last time I worked on this was over the Thanksgiving holiday. And this is from the Baroque Beauties collection. And here's what she will look like finished. This I am stitching on a 32 count Belfast in Buttercup from Under the Sea Fabrics. Beautiful buttery yellow. You know, it's really overcast today, but I'm getting really great colors. I like that. And I made some really good progress on this. You can probably barely see the, the palest color yellow, and so you're just going to have to trust me on this until I get in some other colors or backstitch. Um, so. I finished up the palest yellow on the bottom of this petal here. I did the dark brown around this petal looking thing. This entire thing right here, the base of the flower, um, and on the inside again is that buttery yellow DMC. This pink petal coming down here, and then I did filled in there, did this pink petal up here, and then all of this. So I mean like, did a lot. <laughs> um, little bits here and there all over the place. And I absolutely love this. I can't, can't explain it, but it's just such easy stitching. Um, yeah, there are big chunks of color, but it's like a variable shape, and so it doesn't bother me that they're big chunks of color. And, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed the stitching of this. I have a ton of chronic to get a hold of to start filling in some of the other details. The big center portion in here is chronic and beads. The outside of the flower is rounded in, in chronic. There's chronic on the leaves. I mean, there's chronic all over this thing. So I need to, I need to get a hold of those chronics. So in DMC, page one is done, and I've been working in page two, and then a little bit of this down here is in page three. So, there's that. Love this. Seriously love this. So I worked on that um, until yesterday afternoon. So as I've said in previous videos, the Lakeside Needlecraft, Doreen Jones, Fantasy Stitch Along, um, those parts release at uh, midnight UK, which is about 7 o'clock my time. And so I decided to pull out my Fantasy Sal, get it loaded on my frame, and be ready to go once the new block hit my inbox. I was talking with Danny about this. I would have bet money. <laughs> that this is going to be a cherub or cupid somehow related into Valentine's Day. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised that it is not. 
So um, I'm going to insert a preview here of what this project looked like the last time you saw it. Um, basically I had all of the blocks current and I was working around the frame. So I'm going to now show you what it looks like currently. Um, the current block, and I'll insert a preview of that as well, is a mermaid. Um, and this block is pretty full. Um, so this one's going to take a while. So uh, my fabric here is 32 count Belfast in Heroic by uh, Picture This Plus. Okay, so as you can see I've gotten started on my mermaid. She has a lot of hair, which is pr primarily where I've put my focus in the last day or so. I've also worked on her skin, which yes, I'm doing one over one. Another mermaid with skin one over one. We're just going to pretend that I never said that you guys can slap me for doing mermaid skin one over one. We'll just pretend. Um, I also, while waiting for the blocks to come out, I did a little bit in the border up there. Because I'm trying, <laughs> trying to finish page two, um, at least as far as I can, on this design. We shall see if that happens. Um, I've got quite a bit of border work to do. Quite a bit of border work to do. And then the snowflake is in page two. And the butterfly over here is in page two. So we'll see. Um, and like I said, this black is full. There's not a whole lot of empty space uh, in this one. So, and because I'm doing the skin one over one and she's a mermaid, like, it's just going to take a little while. But... She's really pretty. Now those empty spaces there, I know that you might be thinking that's where her eyes go. That is not the case. She's got some rosy pink cheeks and so I just haven't put that part in yet. So yeah, very excited. Love this design. You know, I was thinking about this though. I was thinking about this design. And I love it so much for what it is. It's not what I was expecting. And to be honest, I don't know why that is. I have seen Doreen Jones style previously and so I knew that her aesthetic is a little bit cutesy or it's leaning towards the cuter aspects. It's like a cute little witch and a cute little mermaid and a cute little unicorn. And when I think of fantasy, I think of the darker side of fantasy. So I think of a siren and I think of like evil witches and I think of um, just like the darker aspects, um, wyverns instead of dragons and, um, ravens and things like that. So, yeah. So that was just kind of like, it, it occurred to me last night this morning that I was expecting, and I don't know why, but I was expecting something darker. It's still very adorable and I absolutely love it. And, um, it's my own fault for thinking that. <laughs> so there we have it. And so I will continue to work on this for the next few days, probably. It's going to take me a couple days to get through this block, um, which I am okay with. Uh, needle minders, um, let's see. This is from Nifty Needle Nannies, Gina's Unique Boutique, and a gift, this little guy down here. Uh, that was a gift from Carolina. So there we have it. And so that is it for the projects I'm currently working on. Next, we're going to talk about my upcoming plans. Okay, so we are currently in week one of my rotation, which is my stitch alongs week. And so my next stitch along is the Birthstone Dragon Sal by Angleside Imaginarium. And I'm just going to quickly recap um, this project. I am stitching it on a 32 count Belfast in Sparkling Diamonds by Crafty Kitten Fabrics. Here is the progress that I've made. We received our Amethyst Dragon, uh, Midnight Eastern Standard last night, which will go in here. So Amethyst, the Wyvern, will go in there. 
And so I will work on that for a day. Once I finished the mermaid, um, then I'll work on amethyst for a day and then save the finishing of her until the 15th for the color a day challenge. So there we have it. Next, one of my other plans is to get started on the February of my monthly series. That is the other stitch along that I'm working on in this Sal's week. So once I finish my day on the Birthstone Dragon, then I will get started on February by the Cricut Collection. And that is what this will look like finished. And I'll go ahead and show you the fabric uh, that did arrive. I am doing this on a 32 count Belfast in Silver Moon by Zweigart. One, two, three stitch, from what I understand, got very far behind in their orders, and so to speed up the process, they weren't surging fabrics. So I was victim to that. I'm a little bummed. But this is my silver moon. I stitch on unsurged fabrics all the time. I mean, you guys have seen my my cross stitch lever that I just showed to you is, a, is not surged, and so I'll make it work. But I was a little bummed to open my package this morning and see that. So yeah, um, it's just like a soft gray color. It's not really, there's nothing special about it, but the called for fabric is um, kind of like a soft, like a pastel purpley color. So I think it'll look lovely on this. So that will get started, and I'll work on that up until the end of my week one of my rotation, or until I get bored. We'll see. Okay. And then, the last thing amongst the plans is my um, first project for the Stitch Mania February Fandom Stitch Along uh, that's going on all week. And so... Thank you so much, everybody, who voted for my first project. Um, it was a really tight race between Big Bang, Game of Thrones, and Beauty and the Beast. Darth Vader Sugar Skull did not get a whole lot of love, which surprised me, but that's okay. Um, at the very last minute, and we're talking this morning, I got the last vote to break the three-way tie. And the winner was... Beauty and the Beast by Dona Stitch. This is a project that I started for Mania. To be honest, I'm not surprised that this won because the final trailer was released yesterday, I think, for the live action film adaptation that's coming. Um, so I'm not surprised that this won. Um, and did anybody else watch that preview and kind of tear up a bit? Because I did. Yeah, I'm sappy like that. Anyway, love this design. I'll be working up here. And this is on a 32 count Belfast in cream by Zweigart. And again, it's an unsearched fabric. So I should stop griping about the search. So that is the progress that I made during Mania. And I'll work some more in the rows. Try to finish up, excuse me, try to finish up that rose. So there we have it. This will also serve for the month-long sal in Cross Stitch It's Fun, which is Once Upon a Time, based on fairy tales. Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale, so very excited to work on that. So I'm going to work on that um, about an hour every day for the next week. Um, so yeah. That's that. Now, several of you are wondering what happened to Stargazer. What happened to the Stitrovia Mind, Sal? What's going on here, Jess? Um, so, basically, for Stargazer, I was waiting for that replacement fabric to arrive to get that started. That's not going to happen. I have to go back to the drawing board for fabric. 
on that one. Um, yeah, that's that. What I got, what I got is not what I was expecting it to be, and um, that's f only my fault um, because I didn't do enough research into it. So that's fine. That's waiting. As far as the mind cell, I just didn't have it in me to make a new start. Um, working really hard on Persephone, working on these other things. I just wasn't feeling a new start. So um, I almost had a new start marathon yesterday. I was going to start four or five different projects yesterday, um, but I didn't, obviously. So mind will have to wait a little bit. The new block was released today, so I have to purchase that. And I'll try to get my act together to, to start that. So that's that. Um, so my plans are what I just showed you. So next we're going to switch gears and talk about some stash acquisitions. I just have a couple of things to show you. Um, and the first was that Silver Moon fabric that I ordered for February. Next, uh, two more packets of needles because I rust needles. And then this was the replacement fabric that I had ordered for Stargazer. Um, and the previews on both 123 Stitch and Picture This Plus, which 123 Stitch pulls from Picture This Plus, so I don't know why. Um, led me to believe that this was more of a gray with some brown accents to it. I'll insert the picture of what 123 Stitch shows. Um, so this is Dawn by Pictures Plus on a 32 count Belfast. Yeah, that's not really what I thought it was going to be. So... It's green blue. It's like not showing accurately. <laughs> Let me see here. So it's showing up more gray than it appears to me in real life. It's very green, very blue, very dark far darker than I was anticipating. Let me see if I can make that color, force that color to show up. That's closer. It's very dark and it's, I didn't even do a floss toss with it to see if my conversion of Stargazer was going to work. Didn't even try. Um, because that's not going to work. So I have to go back to the drawing board and find another stony colored fabric. If you guys have any suggestions for me, I would so very greatly appreciate it. I am looking for something that's going to have gray and brown, um, certainly darker than Winter Wishes, not this dark. Um, I'm trying to think. Vintage Country Mocha is a little bit too yellow. It's more yellow than I'm thinking. I'm really thinking more gray browns, grays and browns. Maybe cauldron. Maybe I need to look a little bit further into Picture This Plus Cauldron. Um, so th that project is on hold. Now, here's the thing about this fabric. One of my planned new starts for 2017 is one of the praiseworthy stitches haunted houses and I'll insert a picture of the one that I want to do. The called for fabric is Dawn and in the preview of that picture you can see this in the background. This is the background for that. So yeah I should have done some more research before I ordered this fabric but the long and short of it is that I have a fabric now for my praiseworthy stitches pattern that I don't have yet but that's okay. Um, so yeah, so there's that. Recent acquisitions, this will go in the fabric sash. This one also was not surged. I have one surged edge. But. So the last time that we spoke about books, 
I was midway through, it's two thirds of the way through The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. And this was my uh, Pop Sugar TBR jar selection for January. It was one of them. And I went ahead and finished it. Um, and once I got to that last hundred pages or so, it was, it was like a really quick finish. Um, I was ready to reach the end. So it was highly emotional, as I was expecting. Um, but I didn't cry. And I think I know why. I know the Trojan War story. I mean, I've seen several adaptations. I've talked about it through um, different courses that I've taken. Um, so the ending was not a surprise. If I didn't know the Trojan War, if I had never seen those adaptations, if I had never read the story, etc., then I might have been a little bit more heartbroken than I was. But because I knew how it was going to end, that kind of detracted from the emotion from it. Also, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but the bitter end of this was especially weird. For lack of a better term. I mean, Greek mythology, of course it's a little bit weird. But this ended on a particularly weird note, and so I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't like that. I understand why, but I didn't like it. So, anyway, um, this was a solid four-star read for me. Um, again, it is about Achilles and Patroclus and the beginning of the Trojan War, uh, it reimagines the relationship between Achilles and Patroclus as a romantic one. Um, and it is, it's emotional. And um, sometimes you just want to punch Achilles because he's stubborn and Greek, <laughs> for lack of a better term. He's just very egotistical. That's the word. And I mean, I know that the entire story of Achilles is, is to teach about pride and, um, yeah, it's all about, it's about reigning in your pride for self. You might be, um, I can't remember what his nickname was. I'm not going to find it. Um, you might be the best of the Greeks. You might be the, uh, you might be son of a god, but you are not all that in a bag of potato chips, shall we say. So anyway, um, really enjoyed it. Quite emotional, as expected. I knew it was coming. So, there's that. Um, the writing style for this is very lyrical. It's, um, so... Greek mythology, as we all know, the reason that we have these stories that date back to 1200 BC or such um, is that it was passed down in song, in stories, and so um, it, it definitely holds true to that writing style. It feels very homerific um, in that it's... Um, it's just lyrical. Like, you could almost, you could almost see the bard singing this song or singing this this story so really enjoyed it um, next uh, let's talk about the books for my most recent TBR jar selection so the first task that I pulled was um, a book by a person of color and I had two options for this that I was considering I was considering The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier um, but I decided to go a different route. And the reason for that is that I have these electronic advanced reader copies piling up. I need to be reading them in advance of their release date. One of the ones that is releasing on February 14th, on Valentine's Day, is American Street. And this is by E.B. Uh, E.B. Zaboy. And the, last, the first name I.B.I., last name Z.O.B.O.I. Um, and I'm going to insert a cover 
of that here. The second task that I had pulled was a book mentioned in another book. And originally I was going to read Push by Sapphire uh, because that book was mentioned in Allegedly that I read last month. However, I decided to go a different route um, and I am instead going to read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm actually going to listen to the audiobook version narrated by Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, because I love those, uh, those um, classics that are narrated by modern actors. Love that. Um, so I'm going to be reading that. And that was one of the, I don't know, million books mentioned in um, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, um, which is one of my favorite books that I read uh, a couple years ago. So I will be reading The Great Gatsby. The first book that I started was an audiobook, and this comes at high recommendation by just about everybody. Um, and a lot of you are going to be surprised that I've never read this, or mad that I've never read it. Um, and that is uh, Stormfront by Jim Butcher. And Jim Butcher fans are all going to be like, you've never read the Dresden Files? No, I've never read the Dresden Files. Um, so I'm, I am now. I'm starting now. Started yesterday. And so far, flippin' hilarious. Um, so The Dresden Files is urban fantasy. It follows this detective who is a wizard. And um, in Stormfront there, he is investigating two separate things. Um, a murder case, as well as a missing persons. And um, so... It's sort of introducing you to this world where these creatures of the paranormal exist, as well as how the two worlds sort of interact. Um, and it's also introducing us to Harry Dresden. And it's, it's funny, but it's also, um, it's well written. It's very entertaining. Um, and the version that I'm reading is actually the audiobook. I'm listening to the audiobook which is narrated by James Marsters. Don't know who James Marsters is? If you've seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you have. He plays Spike. <laughs> so, I can't say that I was, like, a big-time Buffy fan. I really liked Buffy. Um, but finding out that James Marsters narrated this book, um, and not only this book, but the entire series, um, I was like, well, that's cool. So I'm listening to the audiobook, it's a very short audiobook. It's only eight hours, um, and I'm about halfway through. So, yeah, really, really enjoying that. Um, I like seeing Jim Butcher's take on these various uh, paranormal creatures. His vampires make me happy. Yeah, very cool. So, um, excited to finally dive into the Dresden Files. Picked up something else. And it's a book that I've been wanting to read for quite some time, um, and it is Impulse by Ellen Hopkins. And it's a big one. <laughs> it's a big one. But it's a really fast read. Uh, the total page count is 666 pages. Yeah, I said it. Yep, 666, and you see that cover? Hot red. DMC number 666 is hot red. I just thought that was amusing. So it's a huge book, but it goes really fast. Because it is written in verse. So it's super fast. Not only is it, um, I mean, it doesn't take up the page. The pages are little, like smaller than my hand. But, um... Because it's written in verse, it kind of has this flow to it. It is not necessarily in rhyme. Um, but it is, um, it still has like this, this flow to it that is um, natural. It's very natural. So Impulse is about three individuals, and this is young adult. Um, so three young adults, I think, 
like around the age of 17, who are in a, an institution, um, a mental institution, for their various reasons. And so it chronicles their day-to-day. -day. Um, one of them has been there a while. One of them has been there a little bit. And one just got there. It's just been admitted. And so it talks about why they're there and their potential road to recovery, but not sure yet, um, as well as the people that they interact with. So their doctors and their families and the other patients. Um, it's intense. It's really intense so far. So we have the three characters are Vanessa, Connor, and Tony. And I don't really want to talk about what they're, what they're in for. Um, but it's, it's intense. But it's also really, really good. Um, okay, here we go. Um, so this is, this is uh, a line from the book. And it says, sometimes you don't wake up. But if you happen to, you know that things will never be the same. Um, and then it goes on to say three lives, three different paths to the same destination. Aspen Springs, a psychiatric hospital for those who have attempted the ultimate act of suicide. Vanessa is beautiful and smart, but her secrets keep her answering the call of the blade. Tony, after suffering a painful childhood, can only find peace through pills. And Connor, outwardly, has the perfect life. But dig a little deeper and find a boy who is in constant battle with his parents, his life, and himself. In one instant, each of these young people decide enough is enough. They grabbed the blade, the bottle, the gun, and tried to end it all. Now they have a second chance, and just maybe, with each other's help, they can find their way to a better life. But only if they're strong and can fight the demons that brought them here in the first place. So yes, very, very intense. Um, but from what I understand, very well handled by Ellen Hopkins. Um, Ellen Hopkins has, um, she touches on some of the, the quote-unquote trigger warning subjects. Mental health, drug addiction, um, eating disorders, um, trying to think of some of the other ones tragedy and loss. She has another one that's coming out later this year um, that's on, on another, another difficult topic. Um, but she handles them with with grace and she also she takes care of the subject. It's not something to be mocked. It's um, it's something to pay attention to and um, it forces awareness, so impulse. Really loving it so far. I'm about 200 pages in. I expect it might take me a day or two to finish it because, like I said, it reads so fast. Um, and this is the first in a duology. The second might be called Push. No, it's not. I can't remember what the second is called, um, but I'm going to have to get a hold of that. Um, and everything else that she writes because it's very, very good. And I just love the verse. I am not into poetry. Um, I am really not very good at picking up on hidden messages in poetry. Um, I can't say that I have a favorite poet, but I can get down with some verse. So there's that. Um, and so I'll report back next time. Okay, so that's that. My longest segment was books today, <laughs> of course. Um, but that's everything that I have to talk about and everything to show you. So I'm going to end it here. I will say thank you so very much for your continued support of both my channel and my projects and my um, endeavors and interests. Um, and I will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. Happy stitching.